Hey, my name is Thomas O'Hara. I am the co-owner of Cooper and O'Hara Photography. And today we're gonna to break down three lighting setups we did for an editorial shoot with Lucette. Okay, so that was the behind the scenes look of the Lucette shoot. Uh, we shot in Edmonton for Avenue Magazine and we shot the cover and some inside photos as well. Um, we shot it in a local bar. We had about an hour to scout and pre-light and then an hour to shoot with Lucette and we had hair and makeup on set. And then normally we'd have a stylist as well, but Lucette brought her own style in because she's into that and it worked out really good. So. Let's dive into the lighting for each of the three shots. So this is the cover image here. And the main light was a soft lighter off to camera left. And that's just providing this nice soft wrap on her face. So that's the key light there. Soft lighters we use all the time. They just provide this nice soft wrapping light, really good for highlighting subjects. The two other lights we used are DS1s. So those are digital Sputniks. And digital Sputniks are LED RGB controllable lights, often used in video sets, and we do do video as well, and that's why we have a pair. Now they are very expensive, and nowadays you can get cheaper options. You can also just put gels in front of your strobes. There's benefits to both, but because we can control these with an iPad, it's really quick to dial in the look. So we have them available and we use them. So we had one DS1 off to camera right here, and that's this blue light. It's just hard, direct blue light, and that's where you can see this. And then about head height off here, we have another DS1, and that's shooting through a four foot silk and that's just creating a little bit more saturation in the red here and you can see it hitting here and on the stool. Now the idea of using the RGB controllable lights in this shoot was just to mimic some of that lighting that we already found in the bar. If you could see in the behind the scenes video, there's a lot of neon lights. So we just wanted to kind of replicate that in the look. The background itself, is custom made by us. It's basically just using simple dye you can get from Walmart and using that in a washing machine and it just fades the fabric to a red. So that's that there. Okay, and that's shot one. So pretty simple, three lights. Really the one light is doing most of the heavy lifting. The other two are just kind of creating that mood a little bit and then it's all about posing and styling from there, but that's shot number one. Let's move on to shot number two. Okay, so shot number two is actually shot in the bathroom hallway at the restaurant. So it has this really nice neon light already in most of the washrooms. So we just mimicked that um, by putting a DS1 here and that's shooting this red light. The haze is created from the atmosphere we're providing with a hazer. Hazers are awesome, we use them all the time just to raise the shadow levels and create that atmosphere, so that's what's happening there. Our key light is an Octobox over camera left here. I think Brian's holding it on a stick. That's just because we had such limited space, we had to get it up and kind of angle it. Um, it's not the perfect angle, but it works for the shot and the space. Sometimes you just have to use what you have. Oftentimes I say photography is just compromise. You have an idea and then you're constantly just compromising that idea throughout the shoot to get the final result. So that's what we're doing here. The light can't be perfect, but it is where it is. And that's providing the key light on her face. And then we have a third light that is just a strobe with a yellow gel 
over it. The reason we used the strobe is because we needed more power than the DS1 could offer and we just wanted to have this nice sort of yellow light here. Again, just creating more atmosphere in the shot. It's always about atmosphere and mood. And then the final piece of this shot is a big white reflector down below. And that's just taking some of this key light and bouncing it right back in, filling in those shadows a little bit. We learned earlier on in our career that oftentimes you don't want things to go straight to black. You know, you always want to try and keep a little bit of detail in those shadows. It just gives you so much more room in post to maneuver the image and mold the image to what you're looking for. So that's it. Another three light setup and that creates this shot. Moving on to the final shot. Okay, so this is the third and final shot from the shoot. I didn't think much of it at the time and then in retrospect, it's actually become my favorite shot from the shoot, which is funny how that works, but the key light here is just window light. So there's a natural window here, and that light's just feeding in here, providing this light on her face. The secondary light is a, you guessed it, DS1, shooting into white fabric here. So it's just reflecting that and that's creating this red cast on this machine and also the red on her face. There's also red neon lights in the bar already. So that's adding to that effect there. And then the third light is just, again, that yellow strobe, just blasting into the roof here, just to create a little bit more separation. So the thing I think I like the most about this shot is we're always trying to create as much depth as possible in our photos. A 2D image is exactly that, it's 2D. The 2D factor can make it uninteresting. So as much as possible, we find you wanna add those layers to your shot. So I think having this curtain here in the foreground leads you to Lucette here in the midground, which wanders you back to the background here. And it's just this nice leading line throughout the image. And it makes it a little bit more three-dimensional, having that one element right up against the lens and then you go back from there. I'd encourage you as much as possible to try and get those foreground, midground, and background elements in your shoot. The second key takeaway is let your surroundings inspire you. So we came into this shoot without a real clear plan, which isn't always the case, but the way this one worked out, it had to be that way. So we used the inspiration from the bar, the neon lights, the reds, the blues, the yellows that already existed in the space to help kind of create the mood we are going for in these shots. So be inspired by the space around you. Also use the light that's available to you. You know, there's a lot of times where we could have shot a lower shutter speed and just use some of those neon lights that already existed in the shot. But we just, instead, to have more control over it, recreated that light. But also if there's a window that can key your subject perfectly, sit them next to that. You don't always need to use a soft lighter or an octobox. Use the best light that's available to you and oftentimes that can be natural light. Awesome, hopefully you got something useful out of this. This was our quick breakdown of the Lucette shoot. If you wanna see more of these, let us know. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let us know as well. But thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.